Good evening, everyone. Um, it's hard to know where or how to begin something like this, so let me just start as simply and sincerely as I can. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you to the jury of the JCB Prize, uh, to Pradeep Krishan, K.R. Meera, Anjum Hassan, Parvati Sharma, and Arvind Subramaniam. Thank you for reading the far field and for seeing in it something worthy of such an incredible honor. And I mean incredible. It's very hard for me to believe that any of this is true and I don't think it will sink in for a long time. Secondly, I am so sorry not to be with all of you this evening. As some of you know, I live in Hawaii at the moment, which may sound very peaceful and idyllic, but I'm also nine months pregnant, almost to the day, and given that I'm recording this in advance, quite possibly in labor at the very moment you're watching this. And if that's the case, well, then you're certainly having a much better time this evening than I am. It's hard to describe what this prize means to me, especially given what has been happening in Kashmir these past few months. Uh, as I record this, there is still a communication blackout in place, uh, yet here I am, speaking to you across the world, with no problem at all. How does one reconcile such a thing? Should it be reconciled at all? The best way I know, the only way I know, to grapple with such questions is through fiction. It's a strange and imperfect medium, but it's one of the few we have left that allows for the full range of nuance and complexity that our world deserves, that we deserve. There was a time, however, when I truly did not think the book would be published in India. It's a long story, but suffice it to say, more than one publisher, while expressing interest in the book, told me they could not publish it in its current form because of the current climate in the country. I only mention this because on a night like tonight, when books and writers are being celebrated, it's easy to forget uh, and very important to remember that the world at large is becoming increasingly hostile to fiction and, for that matter, to all forms of art. But just when I had given up hope that the novel would ever be published in India, out of nowhere came Rahu Soni, uh, who, along with Anant Padmanabhan and Udyan Mitra at HarperCollins, gave the book a life here, gave it a chance to be read and judged on its own terms. It was a tremendous gift and one for which I will always be grateful. We talk so much about the work that writers do, uh, but the fact is that this book, that any book, would never see the light of day without an editor and a publisher willing to stand behind it. And so Rahul, Anant, Udyan, Thank you for standing behind mine. As far as I'm concerned, this evening is meant to honor you as much as anyone. And finally, I cannot end without thanking my fellow shortlisted writers. You don't know this, but I've admired you from afar for quite a while now. Not only for the quality of your work, but for the way you have chosen to live your life as writers. You have faced the anger and hostility of the world. You have faced oversimplification and misunderstanding. Sometimes you have even faced danger and yet you have continued to write. Watching you from afar has made me want to be a better writer, a braver writer, and it's an honor to be on this list, on any list with you. Meeting you last month and getting to spend some time with you was the best part of this experience, so thank you. I've been told not to go on too long, so I'll wrap up now. But thank you again to the jury for this honor. Believe me, it's one I will never take for granted. Thank you to Rana Das Gupta and Madhvi Bhargava for your hospitality and warmth through this entire process. And thank you above all to anyone who reads the book. Uh, I hope you're all having a wonderful evening. Uh, for my part, I have not had a drink in nine months, but you can be damn sure of one thing. I will be pouring myself one very, very soon. Thank you.